When the war started in September 39, Lexton, like other places, had been making preparations. National identity cards were issued, along came ration books, and innumerable leaflets were distributed telling us what to do and what not to do in time of war. A siren was fixed on the electricity substation in London Road. Many people either acquired a mass-produced Anderson air raid shelter or built one for themselves, as did Mr Ernest Wilson and Heath Road Lexton. The shelter is still there and present owner David Jenner shows us round. I think this one was built around about 1940. The house was uh, built in 19, uh, 1930. And it's uh, been built with pretty solid uh, concrete blocks. Uh, and the roof is about 150 millimeter, uh, which is about six inches, solid concrete slabs. It was accommodation, I think, for a whole family, really, with up to about three to four people. Uh, and there's a sort of rudimentary bed uh, on this side, um, which, would, which would sleep one or two people. And the recess here, I think they could use this either for um, uh, a heater, some uh, paraffin heater of some kind, or even they put their uh, storage for food in it because it's, ve it's ventilated with a, with a flue at the top there. Today, in 2008, the shelter is as dry and usable as it would have been almost 70 years ago. Many concrete pillboxes were built along the line of the River Cone as a defence against possible enemy attacks. Some are still in situ, as this one high up on Hillyfield. By the bridge over the river in Spring Lane, a series of iron stakes are still to be seen. They were erected to prevent enemy tanks from crossing the river to attack the town. Lexton didn't escape from enemy air raids. In October 1940, a bomb landed on Vint Crescent, causing damage to some of the houses. The former maternity home also suffered from an enemy Dornia plane when it dropped a high explosive bomb demolishing the outside laundry building and causing lots of broken windows. The fire brigade were kept very busy that day. The maternity home was replaced by Sovereign Crescent. The Home Guard came into being in 1940 and eligible Lexton men soon volunteered to join up. Two photographs here, both labelled Lexton Home Guard. Can anyone assist with names? One volunteer was Graham Page. He recalls his days with the Home Guard rocket battery. During the war time, rocket guns were mounted on this field in Baker's Lane. They were here for a time before being moved to the Abbey Field. There were 48 rocket projectors manned by eight relief home guard teams of 100 men. Each relief was on duty one night in eight. The order to fire at enemy aircraft was given by the officer in charge. The noise of the rockets could be heard for miles around, shaking doors and windows. The Essex County Fire and Rescue Service headquarters is on the former horse show ground in Halstead Road. In 1943, the site was the fire brigade workshop. A piece of archive newsreel film shows lady firefighters on a series of exercises before an inspecting officer. We wonder who the lady is who won the cup. Among the guests was the mayor, Percy Sanders. He's the one in the trilby hat. Then it was the turn of the men, a competition for teams, get up, dress in uniform and set out to attend to an imaginary fire.
Chits Hill level crossing was the scene of an unprovoked air attack in January 1941 by a Heinkel bomber. It dropped six bombs and machine gunned a passing train. Henry Meadows, the gatekeeper, was in his hut reading a paper when the bullets went through the window. He flung himself to the floor, but happily he was uninjured. The event was reported in the local paper, but the actual site was not allowed to be named. When the war in Europe ended in May 1945, celebration parties for children took place all over the town. These groups of happy youngsters are from Land Valley, De Burr and Collingwood Roads. I wonder how many are still around today. A grand victory party was held in the old parish hall covering those roads that could not arrange outdoor street parties. The proceedings were opened by the rector before tea was served and then Clown Birch from entertained. No film has been found recording these parties, so take a look at a reconstructed celebration street party held a few years ago, served with eats and drinks as children would have enjoyed in 1945. <laughs> Finally, a photograph of a large group who enjoyed an end-of-the-world party which was held in Lexham Park.